So question 37, leak code, Sudoku solver. Write a program to solve a Sudoku puzzle by filling the empty cells. A Sudoku solution must satisfy all of the following rules. Each of the digits, one to nine, must occur exactly once in each row, must occur exactly once in each column, and must occur exactly once in each three by three sub box of the grid. The period character indicates empty cells. Now, if you have a look at the input, all the inputs are string values which is very important to consider. So the idea behind Sudoku Solver is that we need to fill in all of these empty spaces with a value that meets the constraints passed in. So we cannot add a number that is in the same row. Say we tried to add in eight here. We can't add eight here because it's in the same column. Say we tried to add in three here. We can't because it's in the same row. Say we tried to add in nine here. We can't because it's in the same subgrid. So we're gonna have to have an is valid function. And this is valid function is going to check rows, check columns, and check three by three grid. So the best way to start out is to loop through the entire Sudoku board and fill in empty spaces array so that we can easily navigate between empty spaces without too much difficulty. Then we need to utilize some kind of recursive call we're gonna check if one fits in here. We can check to see whether it fits in the row. Does it fit in the row? Yes, it does. Does it fit in the column? Yes, it does. Does it fit in the subgrid, the three by three grid? Yes, it does. So we can move on to the next one. Can one go in here? No, because it doesn't meet the constraints because we have a one here and a one here. So here we carry out backtracking. So we remove that value and then we place the next value in there and we check to see if two works. So two fits in the column, it fits in the row, it fits in the subgrid. We move to the next empty space, which is this one. We move row by row through the empty spaces. So we check this one. Can one go in here? No, it can't because it's in the same subgrid and the same row. Check two, no. Three, no, because it's in the same column. Four, four looks like a good fit because it's, in the row. it's not in the row, it's not in the column, and it's not in the subgrid. So we can move on and we need to carry this out for each individual empty space. So the logic behind actually working this out isn't too difficult to understand and to grasp. The difficulty definitely comes when trying to implement this in the code base. So we'll jump into that now and get started. So I've saved us the effort of writing out two constants. We've got empty, which is equal to the period, which is stated in the question, and possible numbers. As you can see, in the input of the board, all the inputs are string based. So we need to make sure that the possible numbers that we're going to loop through are also string based because we don't want to be adding into the board actual integers. Let's first look at the is valid function, which we're going to be creating. This is going to take in a number. It's going to take in the row and the column as well and the board. So the number is the number we're going to be comparing to. The row, the column and the board are all self-explanatory. We need to check col row and also three by three matrix. Yeah. In order to check the column and the row, we'll loop through the length of the board. And if board at row slash i, so we're constantly incrementing i, which is the column, is equal to the num is equal to the number passed in or board at i col so we're iterating through the row here if this is equal to the number return false because we have found a duplicate within the row or the column now this is probably the most difficult part of the actual problem we need to have a start row so we need to know exactly where it starts so we'll say row divide by three times three and that will give us our starting row position. We need to do the same for start column. Just divide column by three and times by three. And then we need to loop through the start row and start column. So for let i equals start row, it needs to be less than start row plus three because we only need three within the row because it's a three by three subgrid, i plus plus. Then we loop through j, and that's going to be start col. j is going to be less than start col plus 3, j plus plus. 
So we've created this loop through the subgrid. Now we need to check the board. So board at ij, if this is equal to num, or if this is equal to number, again, return false, because we found a duplicate within the subgrid, so it doesn't meet the constraints of the Sudoku. Then outside of this, we need to return true, because it's met all the requirements here. In the solve Sudoku function, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to allocate or find all the positions that are empty in the Sudoku. So empty spaces, we're going to set initially as an array. Then we loop through the board. J is less than board.length as well, because remember, it's a nine by nine grid. And if board at i, board at i, j is equal to empty, which is the constant we set up here, we'll push into empty spaces the position. And the way we're going to do this is as an object with key value pairs, where the row is equal to i, and the column is equal to j. And the reason we do it this way is to make it easier to extract later on. Now let's create the recursive function. This is going to take in one parameter and that's empty space index. So if we called recurse, we're gonna pass the initial index of zero within there. First thing to do with any recursive call is to create a base case. So when we reach the end, and the way to see if we've reached the end of the Sudoku is to check the empty spaces dot length against the empty space index. If empty space index is greater than or equal to empty spaces dot length, we know we're at the end because index starts off at zero. It's going to be incremented by one through each iteration or for each recursive call. And if it equals spaces dot length, which is the length of all the empty spaces in the Sudoku, then we've reached this last space. So return true. So we've got at this point in time, we've got an empty space. Let's extract the row and the column of that empty space at that index row and col empty spaces, empty space index. So now we can loop through the possible numbers here and check to see whether it's a valid integer that can fit in there or a valid string in this case. So let's loop through those values, possible numbers dot length i plus plus. We need to define num. So num is going to be possible numbers at i. Then we can check. So check if valid. If is valid, the helper function we created before, passing in number, which we defined as num, passing in row, col, which we've extracted, and passing in board. If that is equal to true, then we can set that value in the board. So right now we've set, say, one in this first position. What do we do next? We recurse. So we move to the next position. And the way we do that is we say if recurse empty space index plus one, if that is equal to true, and return true. And like any recursive call where we need to check a number of different possible solutions, we need to backtrack here. So we need to reset the board so that we can check other possible solutions. And we reset it to empty, which is the constant. Finally, if the recurse function doesn't come back with any true values, we can return false. And after this recurse function being called here with zero, we can return the board because that's what it's asking us for in the question. So let's run this code. Okay, so it's looking good, let's submit it. And there you have it.